So, uh, Sayadaw, could you please uh, uh, explain more for, for us uh, about the contemplating of the five khandhas? Uh, as we know, the uh, four noble truths, uh, four foundations of mindfulness, as Buddha has taught, um, uh, we need to observe or contemplate inside uh, in order, uh, and we need to observe the five khandhas uh, for us. Uh, for me, uh, the rupa or the feeling seem to be easy, uh, but uh, the perception or sanya or sankhara or the consciousness uh, seem to be difficult to contemplate. So uh, could you please uh, explain and give some example uh, about uh, what is consciousness, what is uh, vaikhanda, uh, what is sankhara and uh, uh, what is sanya? Uh, what is the uh, relationship um, among them, and uh, how they arise and uh, uh, contact to others, and how they proceed? Five khandas are rupa khanda, vedana khanda, vedana khanda, sanya khanda. Sankara Khanda and Vinyana Khanda. These five Khandas involved in each process of appearing and disappearing of impermanent nature. The word I use, ever new impermanent nature, is the same with five Khanda. They appear and disappear together. Ever new means not the same kanda. It happened at the present moment time, which is limitless. In each present moment time, the group of five kandas or impermanent nature happen. We cannot see with our eyes, we cannot hear with our ear. We cannot smell with the nose. We cannot taste with the tongue. We cannot touch with the body. And we cannot know with our normal mind, which is full of attachment. So to understand about five khandhas, we have to close the eye. We have to Abandon using our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Therefore, I, I teach to abandon all our physical, verbal, and mental action. This will cause the result of knowing the impermanent nature of five khanda. Our normal mind is unstable. Therefore, we have to focus on breathing or the object which is the most evident in our body or mind. If our normal mind is busy with the other objects outside, it will be unstable as usual. By focusing on the objects within us, we should develop our concentration. If the concentration becomes higher, the mind can see and understand more. Without concentration, the mind can know only about living beings and non-living beings. The mind without, without enough concentration cannot understand five khandhas or original impermanent nature. The five khandhas or original impermanent nature is the natural process. No one can, can control or destroy that troop or the group of five khandhas. Five khandhas or original impermanent nature 
is always exists and always new. No need to create five kanda. Scientists will not understand about the original impermanent nature of five kandas. Besides, they will never, they no need to create five kandas, and also they will never be able to create five kandas or original impermanent nature. That's why they cannot create, that's why they cannot destroy. So to understand about the real five khandas, we need to abandon the habit of doing intentionally or deliberately. If we cannot abandon our habitual deliberate action, we cannot understand the original impermanent nature of five khandas. Five khandas are beyond time and place. If we cannot detach from the limited time and place, such as second minute, hour, day, week, month, years, life, and also this tamaho or this sender or that sender, this country or that country, if we cannot detach from the limited time and place, we can never understand the original impermanent nature of five khandas. That's why I, I teach the yogis to detach from the limited time and place by accepting the present moment truth, which is limitless or beyond limit. I have to teach or guide like this because it is very difficult to understand about the original truth of five khandas without right practice. Therefore, I, I really explain about five khandas or original truth very detailed because it is difficult to explain with words. Besides, it is also very hard to understand for the mind with strong attachment. To solve this problem, I teach guided meditation and made meditation retreat and center. Now I will explain about five khandas as much as I can. You may or may not understand. It will take time. If you don't understand, you should do good deeds and meditation by using my using my guided meditation. You cannot buy that right understanding about five khandas. Cannot buy with the money. And also you cannot borrow from the others. Only when you are able to follow the middle way or nova eightfold back without attachment, you will understand. Only when you are able to practice nova eightfold first or middle way without attachment on oneself or something or someone, you can understand the five khanda or you can have direct experience about five khandas or original environment and nature. The five khanda is consists of four elements or four foundations. All non-living beings and most of the living beings have that four elements of foundation. These are the energy of hot and cold, hot and soft. 
movement and stillness and fluid and cohesion. These are just energies. These energies appear and disappear together. We we can feel the hot or cool, hard or soft movement or stillness within us. And also we we can feel from the non living beings the act, the air, the wind, the fire, the sun. We can see these opposite energies in all non living beings and also in both of the living beings. These are nature. It will always exist, but not the same energy, which is also ever new. Now we are still alive, but there are these four elements within us. When we die, there will also be these four elements in the dead body. The body will decay more and more and finally it will become the art. Even the bomb the bauna of the art we can we can feel these four elements. So four elements are Rupakana always exist and ever new. If we don't meditate, we cannot feel that four element. When we meditate, we can we can know what is happening in our body, in the body. Vedana khana, Sinya khana, Sankara khana, and Vinyana khana are one of the group. They that group can be called Nama. Four elements can be called Rupa. Sufferings happen together with the mind. Most of the living beings have Vedana khana. But that, that Vedana khana is not something, not someone. Therefore, there is no I no you, no mine, no yours. Vedana Khana is one of the quality of impermanent nature. If we are saved, we will feel pain. We cannot stop that action of suffering. If we are healthy, we will feel good. We cannot stop that feeling. The nature of suffering will will happen continuously, one by one, or ever new. Our body has to rely on, on karma or what we have done before and what we are doing now. And also, our body has to rely on karma, sita and weather and ahara or the food or juice, what we have. Because the, the body has to rely on these four, four fetters, the body is always changing. These fetters are also not the same, always changing. The weather is not the same. What we are doing is also changing. What we eat is also changing. That's why the body is also changing. Therefore, the four elements is also changing. The truth of the weather and the food is just four elements. 
That's why the four elements are always new. Suffering or Vedana Khana, Sinya Khana, Sankara Khana and Vinyana Khana are have to rely on four elements or Upakana. Therefore, these the other four four khandas are also always changing. It is the natural process. It will continue on and on whether we understand or not. If we don't understand the original truth, we will misunderstand something or someone, living beings or non-living beings are real. Therefore, suffering may be sometimes good, sometimes bad, and sometimes very gentle, which is called Upaka Virna. Bad suffering can be called dukkha vidana. Good suffering can be called sukha vidana. The most gentle suffering can be called upaka vidana. The more we do good deeds and meditation with the practice of detachment, the more we can understand about five khandas or impermanent nature. Because of natural Vedana Khana, there is suffering for all living beings. We cannot escape from suffering. Whether we like it or not, there will be one kind of suffering at one time. To understand the Sanya Khana, we will remember the sing, the sound, the smell, the teach, and the things, the object to touch and to know, we can remember because of the sanyakana. If there is no sanyakana, we cannot remember these six same object. Sanyakana is working regularly and naturally. We may misunderstand, we remember the things because we did it. It is wrong, it is not true. We remember because there is Sanyakana, which is working together with the mind. Therefore, whether we want to remember or not, we may remember. We cannot stop the action of Sanyakana. Sankarakana is desire. We want to, to help others with desire. Or we want to meditate. We want to be a monk or nun. We want to kill or we want to lie. We want to do evil things. These are because of Sankarakana. It happened in most of the living beings. That's why we are busy to fulfill our desire. If we don't know the truth, we will misunderstand that is my desire. There is I or someone. There is something or mine. These wrong views are caused by ignorance or not knowing the truth. Now we all are using the Sankarakana. Whether we understand or not, Sankarakana is working naturally. We cannot destroy that khanda. When I was young, I went, I have strong desire to help the people who are in need. But at that time, I cannot. That's why I'm not satisfied with me. Only when I practice meditation, I can understand the power of doing good deeds and meditation. Therefore, I am able to help the people in need by using the power of doing good deeds and meditation. That Sankara Khanna is still happened in my mind. Now I understand that is the nature, not my desire, not my own. No one owns 
this bad or good desire. With this right understanding, the mind is free from this certification and disappointment. Although I can help the people, no need to be certified. If I force someone to whom I cannot help, no need to be dissatisfied. Knowing the truth makes the mind stable. Vinyanakana is the quality or energy of knowing. If we don't sleep, there will be knowing. The object to know may be different, but there will be knowing any time. Knowing about the truth or knowing about someone or something, or knowing about the mind, or knowing about attachment, and knowing about detachment, knowing about ignorance, and knowing about enlightenment. Knowing will keep on happening one after another. It is also the, the nature. There is no one who knows. There is nothing which knows. Knowing is just knowing only. Not knowing is also not knowing only. We may be different from each other. Even our life may be different from time to time. But these five kandas are always existing. Not the same one, but ever new. Four elements is one group. Four kandas, Vinyana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyana kana are one group. But generally we can say all five kandas are appearing and disappearing together. Therefore, we can also call just ever new impermanent nature. Rupa Khanna is also impermanent nature. That is also impermanent nature. Four Nama Khanna are also impermanent nature. My explanation is not enough to understand the real five conducts. Only when you try to do other good deeds without limit, by understanding about five khandas or original truth will happen in the mind when the time comes. Explaining and listening about five khanda or the original truth is doing good deeds. Now we all are doing good deeds, but this is not enough, so keep on trying to do good deeds more and more. Until there is your own right understanding about five kinds. Now, repeat after me. Ida me bonya. Ida me bonya. Nibanada. Nibanada. Isa yo. Isa yo. Ida me bonya baga. Ida me bonya baga. Tabasagana, Tabasagana, Azima, 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 Azima,